Hey, it's Matt Moscona. You found it. Your home for the latest content on your favorite team, the LSU Tigers. And we're powered by BetUS. Remember, this football season, earn a 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. Check out BetUS in the description on this video. This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Every Tuesday, it's our pleasure to visit with Shay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. Talk a little Cruton. Shady, how are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, doing great. A hey, hat tip. Um, you know, you told us last week maybe some targets to keep an eye on that could be flip candidates for LSU. And among them was Cade Phillips, who are the cornerback out of uh, Texas who didn't, in fact, flip from Texas to LSU. How did they pull it off? Uh, Corey Raymond just stuck to it, Blake Baker, this whole staff. Uh, really, it was one of those things, Matt, where a day after he committed to Texas in July, they were still in contact with him. And one big thing, and there's a myriad of factors, but Texas wanted him as a safety. LSU wanted him as a corner, and they just did not give up on pushing him on the reality that they felt they could develop him in the corner. Corey Raymond's track record of doing it, and then pointing to the reality that unless you're Jamal Adams or, you know, Kyle Hamilton or one of those types of players, you're not going as a first rounder as a safety in the NFL. And if that's your goal, if you want to reach the NFL and make a bunch of money one day, then cornerbacks are going much more often in the first round than safeties are. And, and I think Cade really liked LSU. Um, and not to say he didn't like Texas, but this is one that they badly wanted to pull off and, Matt, I'll tell you this, it doesn't get any bigger, well, it does, I guess. They also have the number one corner in uh, DJ Pickett, but this one-two punch, both of them are on the on three future freaks list. Cade Phillips is a six, I think it's a six foot, eight and a half wingspan, ten and a half hands. I mean, these are, he and DJ Pickett are guys that Corey Raymond would go into a lab and draw up as this is the type of corner I want. Elite track speed. Finished third in a long jump in Texas in the highest classification. So it uh, it was a uh, a big big win um, uh, to pull this uh, pull this one from Texas. And in terms of a rebuild before the season even starts, to have two corners who on three's highest on Kate Phillips, we have him as the number seven corner in America. I think he's going to finish top five based off of just the trajectory he's been on. To have those two guys committed already, the season hasn't even started, and I think by signing day, you'll look up and two of the top five corners in America will have signed with LSU. Mm. Uh, they need the Jimmys and Joes. They're, they seem well on their way. Uh, let me just stay on the cornerbacks then, because Aiden Anding uh, from Ruston is set to announce this weekend. Uh, Shay, you and I have talked plenty. I'm looking at the RPM there from on three. Looks good for the Tigers. Are we expecting LSU to, to pull this one off this weekend? Well, why you stop the fun now, right, Matt? <laughs> I mean, just let's keep it rolling. I, uh, I do. Uh, my pick is in for LSU. I think that they came with the offer over the summer. Texas, Arkansas, the other two finalists had been had their offers in, and that's easier for out of state schools to do. We know how that goes with Louisiana. They take their time to do evaluations, and uh, Anding didn't come to camp. So I think had he come to camp, he would have earned it on the spot, but. Right when camp season ended, they went ahead and made the offer, and he was going to commit to Texas. That was the buzz that weekend, and he said, well, let me press pause on that. Came down for the Bayou Splash recruiting event at the end of July, uh, and now is lining up for an announcement this weekend. And look, they just signed a Ruston player this past cycle. They've got plenty of connections on that staff, some former players on that staff, and I think Anding has always kind of wanted that LSU offer, and uh, now that the dust has settled on him getting it and kind of learning more about things that uh, that he'll get on board. So barring some, some twists and turns, which I guess can happen in recruiting, obviously, uh, I do expect Aiden Anding, who you talk to North Louisiana people, Matt, and they will tell you, hey, I sit out there in the stands and watch Russ and one of the best defenses in the state. Anding's the real deal. So uh, this would be a pretty big addition for them and uh, give you three guys then at corner who uh, you could come in and feel really good about kind of the future of that room after 
Biden, you know, need, yes, uh, but something you don't want to do, having to rely on the portal for corners in back-to-back years during Kelly's first two years here. And he didn't as much this year, and we're seeing P.J. Woodland, and they've got high hopes for Michael Turner, and uh, we're going to see stamps get developed. But uh, I think they're moving back with Corey here to saying, hey, go find the best high school corners out there that you feel are in Louisiana or elsewhere. And no, it's uh, kind of like some things never change. If I told you Corey Raymond went out and got three corners and they're all from different states, you would tell me East Texas, Florida, and Louisiana. <laughs> and that would be correct. <laughs> Sounds right. Um, if they get anding, would they be done with three cornerbacks or are they still looking for more? You know, I think they would take more if it was the right fit. Um, And obviously, the name that will get brought up is Jabori Antoine, who is from Louisiana. When it goes to Westgate, plays corner, plays safety. Uh, I think he could play either, but was once committed. He committed, committed to Miami shortly thereafter. But also in that stretch between now and then, they've added Pickett, they've added um, Phillips here recently and then trending here for ending this weekend. So they're not going to turn him away, but what is his view of the class? Because when he decommitted, they didn't have anyone but him. Now they could potentially have three corners. So I'll be curious to see how that one plays out, but obviously you don't want to lose in-state guys, uh, but at the same time, one, you don't lose them to somebody you're playing every year, and yep. two, uh, you've rebounded pretty well if you're going to sign three high-quality corners and uh, in addition to it, land two four-star safeties uh, in Jim Coyley and Jace Thomas. Hey, we'll get right back to the video, but wanted to take a quick second to thank you and so many of you that have tried BetUS. They're a great partner now on AFR, LSU, all throughout football season, and it's never been easier to bet. And look at this deal right now. Go to BetUS, and you can get a 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. Why wouldn't you take advantage of this? If you love the sports bet like I do, you got to try out BetUS. Hey, look, it's week zero. Look, you can start to bet on the Tigers in week one. That line ticking down a little bit from six and a half to six with LSU as a favorite against USC. Might even get a better price the closer we get. But it's week zero. I'll show you how easy it is. All you got to do is go to the sports book. You hit the football tab right there. There's all your NFL games on the sidebar. And then here we go. Here's the college football games. We're heading into week one or week zero. Excuse me. There it is. The first game of the season. Florida State, Georgia Tech. A lot of love for the Yellow Jackets. That number is coming down right now. Georgia Tech getting 10 and a half. Might keep watching that as we get closer to the game. But if you want to make a bet on week zero, great chance to do it. SMU against Nevada, SMU now of the ACC. You want to bet on week zero, now's the time to do it, and you can do it at BetUS and get a 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. It's at BetUS, great partner of ours here on AFR LSU. Now enjoy the video. Let's just stay with this weekend because Aiden Anding is going to announce, and then the biggest fish in the pond in the secondary remaining, of course, is Jonah Williams, the number one safety in the country. Decision day is Saturday. Shay, it's always been uh, Texas, Texas A&M, LSU, kind of feeling battle there. Oregon's had their their hat in in the ring as well. Um, Here with now four days until uh, the announcement, how do you feel? You know, I think this was one that, And I don't want to say, oh, it's coming down to NIL, but when you're in the final week of a recruitment, that's something that gets talked about a lot, even more so when you're a two-sport athlete and the other sports baseball, where an MLB draft comes up, and then you're factoring in that and, you know, these conversations. I can tell you from talking to different schools do include things like, okay, slot value of baseball next summer. Where could he go? Does that need to be part of NIL discussions? So, this one has a little bit more to it, um, you know, than just a guy who plays football. But at the same time, LSU's NIL is in a good spot right now, at least in terms of how they're approaching it. I think they're so far ahead uh, in terms of prepping for uh, when we move to a rev share and, and how they'll approach it and, um, and be in a good spot uh, with that transition. So uh, you don't just tap it into Pickett and Underwood and all these elite players. Uh, uh, yes, they recruit very well. Yes, they make the pitch of what they've always done. Come here, be developed. Look at the NFL players. Look at the staff. I'll play in the SEC. Play for this fan base that's as rabid as any in the country. Uh, so all of that matters very, very much. And, and much of it, more than NIL. I mean, you can listen to guys like Underwood who said, 
I don't really care because I know that if I go down there and I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll make a lot of money in the NFL. So this that would is just a distraction for me if I think about NIL and my decision. So for Jonah, I think it will ultimately come down to, hey, what do you want to do? Um, and he wants to play baseball and football in college. He's got a chance at that at LSU, Texas, A&M. All the staffs have offers out for both. We know Jay Johnson even did an in-home with him. You know, So LSU's rolled out the red carpet here. I think that LSU, Matt, has recruited him the best out of everyone from start to finish. I firmly believe that. I've got people at other schools who feel that that's the case. The one tricky thing for me, look, I always thought it would be LSU A&M. Uh, he's a kid from Ball. He's in Galveston. And till that you know, the staff shake up with the baseball staff at A&M, now Texas has that buzz. They weren't really always in the picture. My fear for if, if I'm an LSU coach or an LSU fan here is that, all right, we've done great. Here we are we're recruiting him all the way down to the end. He wants to be here. We want him. We want him. But how badly? And look, they need him. But Texas might need him more. And when you think about need and perception and the NIL era and the pressure that coming into the SEC that Sark's under, we did this a year ago, right, with Colin Simmons, where Texas had gone like, I don't want to, I don't want to make it up, but it was a long time. It was like almost a decade without signing the number one player in Texas. Mm-hmm. And that was their chance, Colin Simmons. Now, Jonah Williams isn't the number one player in Texas, but I'll give you the rundown on their top five. DeCorian Moore, one time LSU commits number one. He's going to Oregon, not Texas. Devin Sanchez out of the North Shore is going to Ohio State, not Texas. Ty Haywood's number four. He's going to Bama, not Texas. And Michael Fasusi, uh, number five, uh, is going to be announcing this decision. Everyone thought he was going to Texas. All the picks are now on OU. The one I skipped over there was number three, Jonah Williams. So you even go beyond that, Matt, number six, Keelan Russell, quarterback, going to Bama. You have to get down to seven in Texas for Khalid Lockett, who recently committed the receiver. Is Texas really going to let the top six players in the state all get away? Uh, I think that with their backs against the wall, they're going to do all they can to try to make this one happen for you know this week. I think Texas needs this win more than LSU does, but that won't change LSU's push for how hard they're going to go after him and, and try to get this win on Saturday. All right, Shay, got a couple more. Um... Mike Tyler, if we bring it back full circle, was the other player that committed on Saturday. Uh, you had told us all along you felt really good about LSU landing the tight end out of South Carolina. Shay, I think he kind of reminds me a lot of Mason Taylor coming out of out of high school. A guy that's you know six four, six five, two hundred thirty pounds, framed to build, athletic, all that stuff. Uh, is that kind of the comp? Is that what they're thinking here with with a player like Mike Tyler? Yeah, and I think more so, too, it's the complement of what he is to J.D. LaFleur, who um, is an obvious legacy. Dad was a pretty good tight end back yeah. in the day. Uh, pretty good football player who uh, I believe was drafted pretty highly. And uh, if you've seen J.D., he does not look like he's in high school. This is a kid who is ready-made. He can block. He can catch. He will be developed into more of a kind of a pass catcher over time. And I think with Tyler, you get a guy where you say, we can develop his blocking. He's got, you know, kind of already some advanced, um, you know, abilities as a pass catcher. So they can kind of balance each other out in that way. I didn't think they were going to go out and get another like, kind of like blocking tight end where you needed to then kind of move along his pass catching skills. JD can handle all that for you. So I, I think that it's uh, Mason Taylor, sure. I think he'll be used in a similar fashion uh, to how they will use Taylor. Uh, and they wanted two tight ends, and, and this made sense. I mean, they took their time. J.D. committed a year ago, so they only hosted two tight ends on official visits, and Mike Tyler was one of them. Uh, and that came after the summer camp where they watched him work out in person. I mean, I was out there. They put him through three hours of workouts, and when it was over, it was like, this is our guy, and we're going to go after him. And uh, it didn't take him too long to get him committed. So uh, Slade Nagel in a pretty good spot, uh, given that, yes, you lost the tight end in Mac Markway, but... Mason Taylor's probably the most slept on tight end in the SEC, if not the country right now, just because Jaden Daniels didn't need to use him last year. Mm. Garrett Nussmeyer will, uh, just because of the type of quarterbacks they are uh, in terms of the usage of a tight end. And then, I mean, you know, two, six, six and a half, 
pass catchers with the wingspans and catch radiuses that Trey Des Green and Kamori and Kempton have. Uh, anybody would take one of those guys, LSU has two. Now you bring these guys in, uh, pretty good uh, room uh, for a guy like Nagel who comes over from two Tulane and takes over a tight end room that looks pretty well built for the future. And remind you, for a team that wants to use more 12 personnel. Jay, before you go, um, Aiden Anding this weekend, who else might be next? Well, Jonah Williams this weekend is the other, so we'll be watching both of those on Saturday. And then um, Buddy Mathis, the DT out of Georgia, who keeps very quiet. These, that's what the, the, the guys in the trenches do. They don't make much of a fuss over it. They just pop at any time. Uh, but he said he wants to do something before he starts his senior year. I think he ends up at LSU. That would give Bo Davis another. And then we'll watch what Jamie French does. He announces at the end of the month, LSU's in that one. He's a five-star receiver. But you could talk to coaches at four different teams, Matt, off the record, and all four of them could convince you, like, hey, we've got a shot. And then they could convince you of why they don't think it's them. And then he could end up elsewhere. So I think as we get closer to that one, we'll be monitoring it more. But uh, right now, everybody's on Aiden Anding and Joe Williams' watch. Jay Dixon on three, the Bengal Tiger. You want recruiting news? Where you go? Jay's the best. All right, man, we appreciate it. Thanks as always for the time, Jay. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks so much for watching the video. Remember, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And our channel is powered by BetUS. 125% bonus on your first three deposits, up to $2,000. All the info and the link in the description below.